Hi everyone, so uh, a couple of hornpipes this week. Um, so we've done uh, jigs and reels and now we're on to hornpipes, which are basically uh, kind of the dotted cousins of reels. Um, so what do I mean by dotted? Well basically, um, whereas in a reel all the notes are generally, all the quavers are even length, so we get one and two and three and four and... One and two and three and four and... Whereas with hornpipes what we do is the first note of each pair is uh, longer. Uh, it's twice as long as the second note in each pair, so you get a dotted quaver, which means you add half its value on again, so it becomes one and a half quavers, and then the other note becomes a semi-quaver. Um, this sounds kind of sort of complicated, but the simple way of thinking of it is just it's long then short. So instead of you get So it's that kind of feel. So they're, they're quite sort of bouncy, almost playful kind of sounding tunes. Um, for this tutorial, we're doing two absolute classic Irish hornpipes, Chief O'Neill's favourite and the Cork hornpipe. I'm just going to get the obligatory plugs out of the way. So I'm posting one of these each week, um, but the tabs are available in my new book, which is called O'Neill's uh, Tunes for Clawhammer Banjo. So these are traditional tunes from the O'Neill's collection in Ireland, arranged by me for Clawhammer Banjo. Um, so the book is available on Amazon and the link is in the description below. You can subscribe to this channel, that would really help me and it means you can stay tuned for all the videos that I post uh, on here. And finally I have a Patreon page as well, so Banjo Players Among You, which I assume you are given you're watching a banjo tutorial. Uh, you can s subscribe to my Patreon page and I post lots of exclusive tabs and videos um, every month for you to get stuck into. So anyway, that's the plugging out of the way, let's go on to the tune. So this is Chief O'Neill's favourite. Um, which is a very popular tune. Um, so to begin with, we have this, we have an upbeat at the beginning, so this is quite common in folk tunes, where rather than starting square on beat one, we have like a little sort of introductory half bar or quarter of a bar just before. So you would count in and go one, two, three, four, and like that. And the dotted feel starts straight away, so it's all the way through, one and two and three and four and. So these opening two notes are, you've got your, we're in double C tuning by the way, one of these videos I'll remember to say that at the beginning. Uh, so we're going to play the second string, which is um, a D because we've got the capo on, but think of it as a C if you like, and then you're going to pull off the first string with your left hand finger. So that technique uh, is called an off string pull off. So basically you play one note and then use a left hand finger to play that note. Uh, we do that simply because we don't really play successive downstrokes a lot because it would sound very kind of... sounds very sort of clunky. Um, so we tend to play with our finger on the beat and then a left hand slur or our thumb on the off beat, which is the and, if you like. So that's your upbeat at the beginning. We'll park that to one side and let's go into the tune proper. So the first beat of the main you know, first proper bar, is um, a second fret on your first string. So that's, uh, if you think of that as, a, as an E. Um, and then you're going to pull that off to an open string. Um, but what I'm actually going to do, what I do as well, is I sort of hammer the note on as I play it. So if you've watched any of these tutorials, you've seen me do a lot of these. These are called grace notes, very common in Irish music. So basically what you do is as you hit the string, rather than just hitting the note, you're going to hammer on the notes as you hit the string. So it just gives it a little bit more flourish, if you like. So, um, like that. That's how we've, what we've got so far. For the second beat, you're going to return your finger to that second fret. And I should have said as well, we're in second position. So that means you should be using your first finger on fret two. Um, and then you're going to hammer on your second finger onto fret three. So leave that finger on and hammer on from it, if you see what I mean. So, so far this is what we should have. That's it. Now this next one is a, is a, a slightly tricky ornament. The note itself is a, is a G, which is your little finger on fret five, um, and then your third finger on fret four of the second string. Um, and it's very important to get both those fingers on rather than playing one note and then having to find that second note. So the secret of melodic claw hammer is basically to think two quavers at a time. So don't just think about the note you're about to play, think about the note after and where you'll need to be for that. Your playing is so much smoother if you do that. 
Um, likewise, it's a thumb note, that fourth fret. So you need to have your thumb landing on the second string as you play the note before so that it's ready, rather than going and then having to find it hurriedly. It's a lot easier if your thumb just lands there ready. So that's what we've got. Um, and just before I explain why that's a little bit more complicated, uh, the end of the bar is your third fret, so that's your second finger on, fret, on string one, and then a pull off to an open string. So that's your first bar. Now the reason that part of that is slightly more complicated is another ornament in there. So when we play that little finger note, what I've notated in my tab and what I try and play when I play, don't always succeed, uh, is to actually hammer on the note as I, as I play it. And I think it sounds a lot better if you can do this. So it goes... So after you've played the third fret on two and, for beat three you actually want to leave that finger on and hammer on the little finger as you play it and then play the fourth fret with your thumb. Um, it's really tricky to do. If you just play the notes, that's fine. It'll sound okay. Or something I do sometimes, and I think in my demonstration video, to be honest, I probably did this a couple of times, is I actually just slide up to the note as well. That sounds nice as well. So whatever ornament you like and whatever you think makes it sound good, feel free to go for it. I think my favourite is the hammer-on option. Unfortunately, that also happens to be the hardest. <laughs> uh, so you can decide what, what's easier for you. But that's what we should have so far. So that's the first, first bar. Bar two. Um, we're going to return our finger to fret two of the first string. We're going to play that note and then drop thumb the second string. And remember, get your thumb to land on that second string as you play the note, it'll be a lot easier. Then we're going to fret two notes, so we're going to play the second fret of the second string. This is all in second position still. And your fourth fret of the third string, so that's a, a B. Well, it's a B. <laughs> we're thinking in terms of being in C with the capo on. The note that's actually coming out is a C sharp, because we're actually in the key of D. Um, so you're going to put both those fingers on and play the second string and then drop thumb the third string. So, so far that bar is like that. Then we're going to play an open second string, but we're going to do a pull off as we play it. So this is again a grace note. So when you play this next note, you're going to leave that finger on right up until you play the string, and then you're going to pull it off as you play the note, and then drop thumb the third string again. Hope that makes sense. So, so far the bar should be this. And then finally, we're going to play the third string and drop thumb the fifth fret of the fourth string. So, this is what we've got so far. That's what we've got so far. Um, then we're going to go to the fourth string again and we're going to pull off from, a, uh, from an E to a D or an F sharp to an E, <laughs> depending on which way you look at it. So um, what I would do here is put both fingers on ready. So you're going to put the third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string and your first finger on the second fret and you simply pull off from one to the other. So you play the first note and then play the second note. Now as you heard from that rather poorly executed pull off there, it's quite easy to catch the third string when you do it. So um, just watch out for that. There we go, that's better. Um, so those are the first two notes. Then we've got a triplet. So again, I've covered this in my other, in certainly in the reels, which was the previous video I posted. Um, same note triplets are very common in Irish music. They're a little bit difficult to do in claw hammer style. Um, so just to recap, the, the best technique, if you can master it, is to use your playing nail as a, like a, like a pick. So you're gonna play through the string, up, and then down again. And that's actually easier to do in hornpipes, I find. With reels, they're very fast, so it's quite hard to do it cleanly. Um, but in hornpipe, I really would give it a go because it's a lot easier to do in a hornpipe. So that's what we should be coming out with. If that's too tricky, 
Uh, you can use my cheat technique, which is outlined in the Firmware Lasses and Sporting Paddy video, which is where um, I play one note, sneakily hammer on the second fret, and then pull off. And that'll sound okay as well. But ideally, if you can get the same note triplet, I would. Um, and then to finish off that bar, we're going to put our fourth fret back on, on that fourth string, hammer on our little finger, and then open third string, hammer on the second fret. So that whole bar is... So that's bar uh, three. And then we come to bar four, which is this. So uh, again, tricky ornament here. The, the melody notes themselves are, um, if we're thinking in terms of being in C, are a B and then a G. So fourth fret of the third string, pull off to an open string. Um, I've made it a little bit more complicated than that to try and stay true to the sort of Irish feel, uh, which is um, I'm hammering on the note as I play it. So you get your first finger on fret two of the third string and hammer on your third finger as you hit the string. And then, of course, you've got to take your first finger off and then pull off to an open string. So it's quite tricky to do, but it's worth the effort if you can get that sort of ornament sound. Let me go from the bar before just to show you a bit more of what I mean. So you get... See, I think that's a nicer sound than just... I think that's a really nice sound if you can get that. Um, then we're going to play open second string, drop thumb, the, the fourth fret of the third string, and then just a G on the third beat. And then we're actually going to start, essentially start the tune again, because the second half of the A part is basically the first part again with a different ending. So this is what you should have so far. little phrase of the A part we're going to do this um, you're going to put your this is a big stretch but it is doable if you use your left hand thumb to help you so we're going to put the little finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string and your first finger on the second fret of the third string so it's it's a big stretch but if you use your thumb it should be sort of round about this side of your fifth string peg um, just so that you've got maximum kind of reach and if you need to sort of slightly adjust your arm that's that's fine too um, and what we're going to do is we're going to play the fourth string with, with those fingers on, roll onto the third string. So again, I've covered that technique in a couple of other videos. So you're going to play the fourth string, then follow through to the third string. So we do, we're not doing two downstrokes in a row. We're just sort of letting our finger drag through the string. Then we're going to play that string again and pull off as you do so. So one of those. Then drop thumb your fourth string. So that bar is like that. And then finally, we finish off dead easy this bit. So fourth fret of the fourth string and then two strikes of your open string. Then we would repeat the whole of the A section. So we would start with the same upbeat that we started the whole thing with. Then we go all the way around. And then we get to the end again. And this time we're not going to do that upbeat because we're going to go into the B part instead. So this time what we do is go... So what I did there is on beat four, there's no note. But on the and, there's this note, which is your second fret of the fourth string, which is a D. So what, um, what I would do is on beat four, do a kind of a ghost stroke where you don't hit any strings. And then on four and drop thumb that note so you get two three four and and then we're into the b part so i hope that all makes sense that's the a part um let's go on to the b so the b part we've come out of that for a second time ending of the a and then we're going to start on the b part so your fingers on for that note what you're going to do is hammer on from it to the uh, fourth fret so that's your third finger so it's one of those grace notes again and then pull off again back to that note. Then we're going to play 
third finger again, and pull off to your open string. So, then that note again, hammer on your little finger, and then third string, hammer on the second fret. So it's sort of a little run up the scale there. Sorry. Like that. And then you're gonna, we've got your first finger now on the second fret of the third string. You're gonna hammer on your third finger again as you play the string. Then pull off to an open string. So again, remember to take that finger off. Like that. So second string and then drop thumb the second fret of the third string. Third finger on again, open, open string, and then you're going to do that stretch that we did at the end of the A part. So that's where you've got your little finger here, and you're following through. So the first two bars of the B are... Like that. Then um, the next bar, you're going to play your your open third string. You're going to do a series of off string pull-offs here, which I mentioned earlier. So you're going to play the third string, pull off the second string, play the second string, pull off the third string. So it sort of looks quite, it's quite a neat sort of pattern. Then you're going to do a little ornament here. So the melody note is this, which is an E, so it's your second fret of the first string. But what you're going to do, rather than just simply play it, because who'd want to do anything simple, uh, you're going to do a rapid hammer and pull off onto the third fret. So you're going to play the note, very quickly hammer on, and then pull off again. Very common ornament in traditional music, so... It's kind of like a little trill, I suppose you might call it in classical music. And then you're going to drop thumb your second string after that, so... Then first string, second string. And then we're going to play uh, this little phrase here. So you're going to um, put your first finger on fret two of the third string, hammer on as you play the string. You're going to get tired of me saying that. Pull off to an open string. Sorry, then second string, drop thumb that note again, and then just play your third string. So, so far, this is what we've got. just recite the latter half of the A part. And then we'd repeat the B part and then simply end on... And that's the whole of Chief O'Neill's. A little note just before we go on to the cork horn pipe. This tune is often played as what's called a Mixolydian tune. So at the moment, the version that I wrote in my tab book and that I've taught to you is the straight major version. So it's all notes from the major scale. There are no surprises there. A Mixolydian tune, in simple terms, is when you flatten the seventh note of that scale. So you get this. Which is very common in traditional music. So sometimes people play this tune like that. In the O'Neill's collection, it's straight major, which is why I've written it like that here. But you often hear it played with a flattened seventh. So what that means is this note, which is your fourth fret of the third string, or a B, in terms of double C tuning, um, sometimes that note's played that one instead. So you get... So you might hear that done slightly differently. The Dubliners probably did probably the most famous version of this tune, and they used a Mixolydian version, so it's just worth noting that. Um, and just in case anyone's confused about this whole key thing as well, I'm just going to mention that. So um, the tune is in D major. That's how fiddle players play it, mandolin players play it. That's how they all play it. Um, the banjo, often we use a capo to match the fiddle player because for banjo players, it's generally easier to play in G or C, whereas for fiddle players, it's generally easier to play in A or D. So what we're doing here is we're playing in double C tuning, so we're thinking in C, but because we've got the capo on it's coming out as D. So when I say that this note is a C, to us it is a C, <laughs> to everyone else it's a D. 
I hope that makes some kind of sense. Do give me a shout if it doesn't. Um, and there's a bit of that on my Patreon page as well if you want some more clarification on that. But basically, yes, that's the that's what I'm talking about when I talk about keys. Basically, banjo players are always the outcasts. That's all you have to remember. Um, but anyway, we've covered Chief O'Neill's, so let's go on to the Cork Horn Pipe. Uh, the Cork Horn Pipe is uh, a lot of fun. So again, it starts with a little sort of upbeat. Um, so you'd come to the end of Chief O'Neill's. <laughs> And then you've got like a spare beat, which is beat four. That becomes the beginning of chord corn pipe, which is simply the third string, and then drop thumb that fourth fret of the fourth string. So you'd end Chief O'Neill's, and then you're into the chord corn pipe. So what I would do here for this opening phrase, which is tune your banjo first of all, um, is Get your first finger ready on, I use the second fret of the third string, that's just what I prefer, and you play the fourth string, and then pull off your third string, and then you play the fourth fret of your fourth string, and pull off the third string again, so you get, and again, so that's the first bar, and then we're going to use that off string pull off technique again here, so we're going to play the second string, Pull off the first string, hammer on to the second fret as you play the first string, then pull off again, and then we're going to do one of those little twiddly things, <laughs> the ornaments. Uh, so you're going to play the second string, hammer on the second fret very quickly, and then pull off again. So kind of very much like as though it's one note. And you're going to drop thumb the B there, which is the fourth fret of the third string, second fret and then pull off to the open string. So this is what we've got so far. Like that. Um, then the next bar, bar three, in terms of the right hand, it's basically first string, then third string, the whole time. And with the left hand, or right hand if you're left-handed, is you play the open string, hammer on to the second fret, then third fret, then second fret again, um, and then we're going to do uh, again another twiddle, so technical term, so the first string, drop thumb the second string, and then we're going to basically do a run down the scale, B, A, G, F, E, D, and then back down to C, so in other words, useful to learn your scales here. So, so we've got those first two notes, then we're going to get the third finger on the fourth fret of the third string and the first finger on the second fret, play, pull off, then open third string, drop thumbing the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then do the same thing that we did before on the fourth string this time, so fourth fret, pulling off to the second fret, and then we're back into the first phrase again. So this is what we've got. second string, drop thumb the third, then we're going to play the fourth fret of the fourth string, which is your E, pull off your G string, as it were. Um, got to get one G string joke in every video, because it's funny. Then second fret of the first string, so that's your E, oh sorry, <laughs> hammer on your second finger, uh, but do it better than I did. Then do twiddle on the first string, and then Drop thumb your B, which is that that fourth fret of the third string there, and then the ending is very similar to Chief O'Neill, so so that's D C C, um, and then we start the whole A part again. So that's the A part all sorted, um, and then so you would do the same upbeat that you did before to kick off again, and then round you go, and then when you get to the end the second time. Similar to Chief O'Neill's and indeed many tunes, we've got a different upbeat going into the B part. 
and the upbeat this time is um, a B and then a C. So you're going to play the fourth fret of the third string and then use your first finger to pull off the second string with your fretting hand. And then we're into the B part. Um, and then you're into the B part. Um, so again, just always remember on the beat you're going to be using your finger. If you're doing two downstrokes in a row, you shouldn't be, <laughs> uh, basically. So it'll just be a lot easier if you can keep in mind those that, that rule. Um, so that's the A part. Let's uh, go on to the B. Okay, so the B part to this tune, I absolutely love it. It's triplet-tastic. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play the first string and then drop on the third string. Like that. Um, then we're going to do one of those same note triplets. Again, it's tricky to do. But if you can do it, it's really good if you can get that technique with your playing nail. Otherwise, use the cheat and play the third string, hammer on, and then pull off again. Or you could, the other thing you could do actually is play the third string, drop them the same note on the fourth string, which would be your seventh fret, and then play the third string again. So you get like that. The only downside with that is obviously you've got to travel quite a way up the fretboard to get that. But if that works for you, then go for it. So that's the first half of the bar. The second half of the bar is exactly the same, except you're going to put your second fret on. So you got... And then into the second bar of the B part, um, we've got two regular triplets here. So what we do here is we're going to put our second finger on, so that's the third fret of the first string. You're going to play that note, then drop thumb the third string, then play the third string again with your finger like that. So the timing of the whole of the B part is one and two and a three and four and a one and a two and a three and four and a. So make sure you don't accidentally extend those triplets so that the bar's too long. They're da 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 So as quick as you, sort of, as quick as that. Um, so uh, the second bar, start with, we've done that. Then we're going to do exactly the same with our second finger, second fret, sorry, on. Then a little twiddle. So that's what we got. Sorry, I did it wrong. Like that. Um, the next bar is pretty easy. We're just gonna again. It's the it's the first string and then the third string. So it's the same bar as bar. What was it? Three of the A part. Um, with a slight different, I just put the hammer on in a different place. So naught two three two. Uh, then we've got a brilliant triplet run here in the next bar. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Um, not going to lie, it's quite tricky, but it's doable. So uh, first of all, we're on the first string, and we're going to play open hammer on the second fret and pull off again. But do note this is not the same as the twiddle. So this is different. So it's not a grace note, it's a triplet. So a triplet is basically where you squeeze three notes into the space of two quavers. So instead of one and two and, you've got one and a two and a. So your beat should fall in the same place. If you've got a metronome or you're tapping your foot, bum, bum, ba, 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 ba. So they should always fall in that, in that gap. So that's the first triplet. Then we're going to play the second string and then drop thumb the fourth fret of the third string and then play the second fret of the third string. So you're just going down C, B, A. And then we're on the third string and it's the same manoeuvre as the one on the first string. So open, second, open. I do a hammer and then a pull off because I think the pull off is sufficiently strong that you don't need to play the note with your right hand or left hand if you're left handed. You can do if that's you know whichever whichever feels more comfortable. And the last triplet in this bar, I've debated long and hard because in the book I wrote it as two pull offs, um, but I don't always do that. In fact, sometimes I do it as a as a I play the note, do a pull off, and then play the note again. But what you need to do is actually put three fingers on the on the banjo at the same time. So your little finger on fret five of the fourth string, third finger on fret four, first finger on fret two, and you're literally gonna peel off five, four, two, like that. 
But as I say, you can play that last note if you feel that the pull off's a bit weak. So the whole triplet run goes like that. And then, like Chief O'Neill, you then essentially return to the latter phrase of the A part. hope you enjoyed those great tunes and uh, any questions just let me know um, as I say do subscribe to the channel you can keep up to date with all of my uh, tutorials please buy the book that'd be great <laughs> uh, it's available on Amazon the link is below um, my website if you want any of my music and also um, my patreon page if you want to subscribe and uh, you could just for a small amount each month you can get uh, your hands on a lot of free exclusive well it's not free because you're paying but exclusive uh, tabs and videos so thank you very much for watching. My name's Dan Walsh. Hope you're all well wherever you are. Happy picking, and I'll see you soon.